Homeworld is not an easy game to play and the remastered version didn't change that. So let me help you learn to play it well by first starting with 3D movement. After selecting any ship, you can simply use a right click to open the flat plane and right click once more to choose the end point on that plane. Pressing space will open the sensor mode which makes it easier to send ships to objects like other ships or resource points. This way you only need one right click to move a ship. You can use a single key to send harvesters to their job at the nearest resource point automatically, but to optimize the number of harvesters per resource point, you will want to do this manually. This is why right clicking and using the sensor mode is so useful and quick. Now for moving in two planes. To add height to your movement endpoint, you have to hold the shift key on your keyboard or left click on your mouse and move the mouse forward or backwards to add or deduct height to the end point of the movement. When it comes to objectives, you can try to simply right click them, but if you are off the mark, you will end up with your ship moving only on one plane and end up below or above the objective. You can also right click your own ships and this will give your currently selected ships orders to follow them around. Moving in two planes is especially useful when you want to avoid moving straight into enemy fire and surprise them from below or above. As I already mentioned, resource harvesters, that is our second subject. There is only a single resource in Homeworld, but it comes raw in several shapes and sizes. These offer several active slots for harvesters and are dotted around the playable space in small bunches but you don't gain resources for new ship production or research when harvesting is done, but only once those raw resources are refined. This can happen in the mothership's resource module or inside carriers and special mobile refineries. The point where micromanagement comes into play in this system is that you have to minimize the time harvesters spend flying full cargoes of raw resources from a resource point to a resource module for refining. This means your task is to move your mothership and all your other ships which have resource refining systems to the actual resource point. Ultimately, you even want to align those resource modules on those ships with the location of the resource points, so ships do not have to fly around the ships themselves to drop off raw resources. This is where knowledge of 3D movement comes in as ships themselves won't change their orientation while standing still, but you have to move them in both planes and all three axes to match their drop-off points to the raw resource points. Once you have exhausted a resource point, you need to move on to a new one with both your resource harvesters and your refinery ships, be they carriers or just mobile refineries. Maps are usually designed in such a way that going for new resource points will force you to move closer to your enemy and fights for resource points are inevitable. Do note that Homeworld has a system of ship subsystems which you can target, meaning you do not have to destroy a ship to remove its ability to accept raw resources and refine them. All you need to do is to target the ship's module with your attack craft and wait for its HP to be depleted. In that same way, you can target ship's production modules or even main weapon modules on bigger ships. Their engines are another big point, especially since the bigger the ship is, the slower it moves. This is why big ships are vulnerable to smaller ones as they cannot target them with their weapons and can lose their modules one by one rendering them useless flying piles of junk. This brings me to two additional very important gameplay pillars of Homeworld, the ship's combat balance and the system of capturing enemy ships. Those would be the famous salvage corvettes, but we will get to those. Almost all ships in Homeworld games belong to a class, 
and each class of ships has certain advantages and disadvantages as well as combat bonuses against some classes while it is vulnerable to others. The fighter class of ships is very refined scouts, interceptors, defenders, fighters and bombers. Out of those, only the bombers are effective against capital ships, while the rest can fight against each other and hold against corvettes for a short while as they lack armor. But what they lack in armor, they make up for in speed and maneuverability, which is why capital ships can't hit them. Meaning death by a thousand cuts is a valid tactic if the enemy fleet lacks anti-fighter ships. And those anti-fighter ships can be from the corvette and frigate class, specifically the assault, flak or drone frigates and multi-gun corvettes. Ion cannon frigate, however, is only useful against frigates and larger ships, just like the heavy missile frigate, while the torpedo frigate isn't built to combat fighters, but corvettes. All of this information is available in their build menu, where you can learn which ship type they are strong and weak against. This is where the core gameplay is at. Learning the intricate balance of ship against ship combat made even more complicated by all the upgrades from research trees as well as the use of different stances, tactics and formations. These last three alone require a whole separate video which I will work on next. Until then, let's cover the use of the beloved salvage corvettes and their far less liked big brother, the marine and infiltrator frigates. Both types of ships have the same use, take over enemy ships, but they do this in very different ways. The salvage corvettes fly to enemy ships, anything above and including the frigate class, attach themselves to the hull and once the maximum number of them has taken position, they turn off the captured ship's systems and drag it off to your mothership for conversion. This means you can't capture a battlecruiser as it can't fit into the mothership for conversion to happen. When it comes to marine and infiltrator frigates, they fly up to the enemy ship you want to capture and deploy combat personnel which fights to take over the ship as long as your own frigates are attached and operational. A successful takeover hands the ship to your command right there and then. No need to take it all the way back to the mothership. The reason most players do not like these is their low speed and large size, which makes them easy targets and also lack of spectacle the corvettes give you as you drag a captured ship and the mothership swallows it whole to be fully converted to your side. This whole capture mechanic is infinitely more useful in the single player, where you can distract enemy ships with cheap ships, even just probes, make them turn around and jump them from behind with your salvage corvettes. If you manage to get enemies separated by attacking them from different angles, pulling them out of formation with movement just on the edge of their detection range, that makes your work even easier. For a list of homeworld-like games, check out the cards on the screen. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!